join us for a review of the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. Let's go! In the direct front view, indeed, we see some resemblance 1 series and 2 series. Also, if you think about the M135i and this one here, the M235i, because they both have this meshed front grille, special to this top sports trim, and also with the frame around it, really strong appearance. Of course, a huge double kidney for a compact vehicle. LED lights are standard. Optional, you can see those ones here are the adaptive LEDs, and then also very strong lower bumpers, and here in high gloss black, and also bigger air intakes right here. 4 meters 52, 14 foot 8, or 178 inches is the length of the 2 series Grand Coupe. That's 20 centimeters longer, or 8 inches longer than the BMW 1 series, and I think this indeed makes sense if you think about the Mercedes CLA, which is so to say the direct competitor of this one here, is now at the same length in the C-Class in this new generation. And here you still have a difference from the 2 Series Grand Coupe to the BMW 3 Series. And I think, you know, this niche in between, that also only makes sense. Because this one here is more thought out for the urban user, whereas the 3 Series may be more towards the motorway, because it's also a little bit longer. So this one will be a little bit easier to find a parking spot, but still, of course, a little bit longer than, than the compact hatch as the one series. And in the rear we can take another glimpse at this additional spoiler lip, also the 235i logo together with the X drive on the other side, signalizing this one is the all-wheel drive model. Then those tail lamps, really horizontally drawn, lighting signature, and also this black strip that goes all the way across the rear. And this lower area is really very voluminous. You can see, especially from my perspective here, this one is actually wider than the top part and I think it's a little bit too thick in the lower area or what's your, your take on that? So what about the engine? Of course first starting with the most powerful one, the M Performance engine here. This one for the M235i, 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo petrol engine, 306 horsepower, 5.1 or 4.9 seconds with the M Performance pack is the acceleration figure, 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour again. The all-wheel drive, front plus rear, but 50-50 maximum distribution. We've been driving this engine in the um, X2 and also in the new 1 series, and it was actually quite good in performance, and also the handling was really uh, in a way that we did not miss a rear-wheel bias. So now the rest of the interior, beautiful LED ambient lighting right here and they're also a little bit more joyful with materials, for example here with the blue fabric. And the interior of the M Sport or the M235i are basically the same. Blue contrastages here, soft touch, also the top part here is soft touch, Hofmeister King design element inspired by early BMW coupés, also galvanized, great build quality. Door pockets, yeah, you can fit some bottles here. Then you got the M entry badge. It just says 235i when it's the other version. Also with the M Sport steering wheel, it is actually pretty thick. And you can already see this digital layout of the screens. Soon more deal to that, what is what. Seats, there will be a lot of different seats available. It will start with, for the Grand Coupe, in for the two series can we with base seats in fabric, all fabric, at least you know in European markets. Then you can get sport seats, which are a little bit more accentuated on the shoulders, and you can get them in all sensor tech, sustainable leather red in black or beige. That will be predominantly for the US market also. Then you can also get a fabric sensor tech mix, so fabric on the inside, sensor tech outside. And this one here is the 
optional, let's call it super sport seats or M sport seats, then with the integrated head restraint, visually even more attractive than we know with this, let's say, fake hole inspired by racing where the belts come through and so on. And this one here has a fabric mix on the inside where it should stay even cooler in summer. And then Alcantara use on the outside a perfect mixture and of course visually the best seat. Mm, it's not clear yet if it's also available in the US. In the one series, for example, they were rather going with the base sport seats but that's also totally fine. So both seats are actually quite cool. And which seat is better as for the comfort? That really depends on your personal body. So we all have often the case that the top sports seats are less comfortable, but sometimes in some rare occasions, it's the other way around. And as far as I remember from the one series comparison, it's here the case that the optional sports seats are bringing you a little bit more comfort so um, I'm actually fine with those good comfort um, here we have it with manual controls actually but it's also fine here for pumping up your <laughs> yeah they just do it because we can keep the auto go for a meme and then this it's a little bit strange the control here if you compare it to a lot of other vehicles but you lift this and then you can control the back part of the seat but you know why not you can also make the lower area here a little bit longer and it's a sporty seating position definitely, but you have enough space. Headroom here with 1m86 or 6 foot one is also given. And yeah, in the front you definitely feel like being in the new 1 series, so this is not much of a difference. Steering wheel can also be adjusted pretty easily, so that's cool. And again, a lot of high class materials. Now the interior overview, yes, it's identical to the one of the 1 series, the new generation. Soft touch here on the dashboard everywhere, then the thick M steering wheel in the M Sport or the M235i heated steering wheel is also available. Then we got this, you know, nice element with a structure right there and also some more part of the ambient lighting. The climate unit is still separate or still manual to control. I like that so it's easier to control it while driving definitely. So that's, I mean, just easier. And also the seat heating. In the lower part you have some hotkeys and a metal knurled volume knob. And the cockpit setup as we have here. So it starts with a base 2 series Grand Coupe. Would start with analog instruments with 5.1 inch smaller screen in the middle. And on the right side would be 8.8 .8 inch. That one then is called BMW Live Cockpit or Live Cockpit Plus when the GPS is inside. And what you can see here is the upgraded version that's called BMW Live Cockpit Professional. Then left side 10.25 inch all digital instruments and right side 10.25 inch widescreen right there. So two times 10.25 inch. And here on the left side, for example, the most functions you can only see then when you start up the car, which I'm allowed to do so, <laughs> yes, today. And you can see the RPM, they go counterclockwise. And you have to get used to it for BMW, definitely. But then again, the reason is that on the inside, then you have space, for example, for GPS information. And yeah, that makes sense then, in a way, definitely. If we move over then to the right side, here with the screen, either you control it via touch, so that's possible. How the GPS is being led and so on, that's also cool. So it's very responsive and you can just say it again from experience using the GPS systems on driving events, the BMW GPS so far are always among the best working. And now to the rear compartment. Of course, also frameless as for the doors and also with the ambient lighting right there. And we also have this beautiful fabric Alcantara mix here for the rear bench. And the typical BMW rear bench shape in this very compact and, you know, round design. And the thing is, here for example, also soft touch at the rear door. So that's also premium quality at the inside of the doors. And this compact segment is of course no, let's say, packaging wonder as for the legroom. And I mean, it does exactly fit with four tall adults. The same goes also for the new One Series, but in the predecessor generation of the One Series, it was not really possible. So we have gained a little bit more legroom from platform to platform. Here with those optional sports seats, you lose some legroom. But then again, when you hit it with your knees a little bit, there's a soft back. 
When you go for the normal sports seats, you have a hard shell background, but you have a little bit more legroom. So, yeah, I mean, it is, of course, significantly better than with a 2 Series Coupé you will have, for example, but still somewhat limited, but you can live with it. Headroom does exactly fit. I cannot put a hand over my head, but it exactly fits here with my head. You see the roofline is a little bit falling, but you can still drive it with four toy adults, but just barely, so to say. But if you then think about if this one here would be then a rear-wheel driven platform with longer front hood and then less space on the interior, then this one here would not be possible. Isofix at the outside seats each. You do not flip the seats from here, that's not possible. You do it from a trunk. The only thing you can do from here is use a ski hatch right here. Or alternatively, cup holders here, also adaptive. On the middle seat, yeah, it is also possible somewhat, yeah, that works. So for emergency situations. And in the middle part, there's also a middle tunnel. There are two USB-C devices. And now to the hatch. There we go. And of course, you have a little bit of limitation here in loading in and out. That is better than with the one series hatch. So more space underneath. But you better ask for the trunk length if you compare it to a one series hatch here with a two series Grand Coupe. And that's then here in the trunk in length. Yeah, almost a meter is like 95 centimeters. And the width is. Exactly, yeah, maybe a little bit less than a meter. And the height right here is about 45 centimeters. But if you then think about the height below the cover of a hatch, then this one here is actually totally fine. Maybe even a little bit higher, if you think, again, under this cover. So, about flipping the seats, you release them right here. Here and also on the other side. There we go. And then either you put some things in the trunk which can push them right through or you go around to flip them right here and then you have this opening right there. And this one is of course then a significantly longer length than you would have in the hatch. Or then of course in a 2 series normal coupe. And here then we go to the front seat with almost 1 meters and 70. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. First of all, I think it makes sense to position this one lengthwise between the 1 Series hatch and the 3 Series sedan or Touring then of course. As I said with the CLA and the C-Class at Mercedes, it doesn't make sense lengthwise. So here that you can somehow better find a parking spot than with the 3 Series, but still have some more trunk length than for example with the 1 Series hatch. Yeah, I mean, the one series hatch is of course more practical to load in and out, but I think you can still live with that one. And also with this front wheel driven platform, yes, I really enjoy driving rear wheel driven cars. However, since I have more legroom than here on the interior, it also has a pro side of that. And especially in this top sporty spec here, we did experience it before that it really makes sense also in an agile way to drive it with the X drive so you don't really miss the rear wheel bias when you have like a very neutral and balanced handling. The weight is also not that high and so on. And design wise, I think really top notch, especially in this front or front three quarter perspective. A very sporty design, but yet very elegant. Yeah, in this top spot spec, I wasn't really a fan of the, you know, the, the lower spoiler in the end. That's the only thing I would not like design-wise. But that's, I think, also just, you know, a matter of, of personal taste. But I think what's important, of course, it looks more spectacular, spectacular here in the M235 i trim, yes. But even a base 2 Series Grand Coupe will have the basic elegant lines. So you don't have to pay the most money always to get, you know, this beautiful design, uh, sedan design. The interior also with a high build quality, also um, the, the optional sport seats which are pretty cool but you can also live with the base sport seats of course but definitely they have a very interesting choices right there for the interior and you get all the features you might expect also from rather the, the bigger BMWs, all the technologies also now available for the compact size models and also reasonable legroom there where you can somehow combine it you know when you think about 2 Series Coupe or 2 Series Convertible, there's no real 
real legroom won't also be in the new generation so if you still want the sport design on the exterior but still some usability on the interior that could be then the interesting mix as for that of course we're looking forward to drive it very soon and keep you updated here on autocofuse so please subscribe if you haven't done so far and see you next time